educative video of microsurgical management of cervical spine injury, C4 fracture dislocation, reduction and carpectomy and stabilization. 28 years adult male presented with history of road traffic accident with three days prior to admission of severe neck pain and weakness of all four limbs. Examination showed quadriparesis grade 3 by 5 confined to wheelchair. He was investigated with MRI scans, cervical spine and whole spine screening showed a fracture dislocation C4 vertebra with retropulsion of the body of C4 with a very significant cord compression at, at C3 to C5 with a significant pressure. He was put on Gardner-Wells skull traction with 10 to 12 kg weight for 48 hours with serial x-rays. The dislocation was not reduced. Then he was taken up for surgery, anterior microsurgical approach and C C3, C4 discectomy, C4, C5 discectomy, C4 corpectomy and stabilization with expanding cage. That is the incision. Now anteriorly the oblique incision is made and the prevertebral area is reached and first C3, C4 discectomy is done microsurgically under the high illumination and high magnification as shown here and during the procedure patient is in skull traction interoperative images and completely the discectomy is done and now you see we have reached the posterior part of the disc and material disc material is extracted now we are seeing the dura matter there and with the dural protector the osteophytes or the bony pro prominences are excised with one millimeter calisthen punch and complete discectomy is done. Here the part of the disc material was inside the spinal canal. Dura is completely decompressed as is shown here and the edges of posterior lung ligament are coagulated under high illumination and magnification of the low bipolar. Dura is protected and intraudible foramen on both sides are cleared as is shown here. Now complete discectomy with clearances is done. Now same procedure is done at now C4, C5 discectomy is done completely as is shown here microsurgically as is shown here again there is a fragment of the disc material inside the canal due to the trauma and disruption of the disc. Now dura is completely decompressed at C6, C45 space is completely decompressed and cord is decompressed and dura and cord both are decompressed and the fragments of the, of the disc material C45 which were going into the canal are taken out completely as shown here and the bony edges again are excised and the cord is decompressed because of the trauma as I mentioned to you earlier there will be a lot of bone fragments and disc material inside the canal that causes pressure on the nerve roots and the cord leading to neurological deficits. These are the fragments which need to be taken out and extracted so that the roots are decompressed and the postoperatively pain is practically not there to these patients. So laterally the probe is passed and the roots are cleared in rotable location on the right side as well as on the left side. Now you can see the complete both the discs are taken out C4, 5, C3, 4 and C4, 5 as shown here. Now we have to do the corpectomy. C4 body. The bonds of carpectomy medial to the scalenus anticus muscles origin on both sides. 
is coagulated and cut as is shown here in between these two the body is taken out on both sides laterally and vertically from c34 and c45 disc spaces now as you see there now the body is isolated and now the now with the nibbler the part of the body which can be nibbled is taken out and those bone fragments are kept for the bone grafting which we use post operatively to fill the cage and to put them into the cage and bone graft now with the diamond drill the part of the body is deeper part of the body is is drilled and starting from the center and going peripherally and vertically downwards and drilling should be in the layers superficial to deep transverse and vertical as shown here we always prefer to use diamond drill which decompresses quite smoothly heat generation is less and soft tissue injury if it slips is less now we are going deeper and deeper as you see there the lateral part on the left side and right side both are drilled on the left side the bone appears to be angulated lateral displacement going anterior more on the left side as compared to the right side now it is drilled all around anterior posterior and lateral completely now you see that the now once thin plate of bone is left we use a kerosene punch 1 mm 1 mm the bone thinned bone is removed now you see the lateral part on the left side appears to be quite loose and it is moving during nibbling now thin sheet of bone is left and further it is drilled and thinned out so that you can remove it without any problem now that is the deepest part of the vertebral body which is being decompressed with the diamond drill and thinned out as much as possible at the same time not crossing the boundary of posterior longitudinal ligament now it is drilled completely lateral to till a thin film of bone is left posteriorly on the dura always we must take care not to cross that boundary once we know that a thin film is left then we take a micro bone scoop and the bone is scooped up every stage you take an x-ray intraoperative fluoroscopy and see where we are and what we are doing that's really of great help and safe to the patients now you see the thin film of bone is being taken out with the microscope bone scoop and the 1 mm kerosene punch one must remember all the movements here are away from the dura away from the dura on all sides this is of utmost importance and this 1 mm microscope is a microscope is 1 mm so there is no problem uh, it causing the dural injury now you see there the the bone which is impinging on the dura mater on the left side is scooped out completely and the lateral to lateral and superior to inferior complete dural uncovering from the bone needs to be done as shown here now you see that the bone is scooped and this bone appears to be densely adherent or stuck on the dura on the left side so it is drilled more on to the left side and that part of the bone which is significantly pressing on the dura on the left side is taken out now extensive drilling is done and the bone which is impinging on the dura on the right side is scooped with a microscope now you see complete 
superior to inferior and lateral to lateral the dural decompression is done and there's a thin film of bone on the left side that also is removed with the microscope as shown here so at no time dura is touched or compressed now every stage if there is any bleeding from the soft tissue is coagulated and absolute hemostasis is maintained now that is the end stage of the drilling and complete corpectomy of c4 and c3 c4 discectomy and c4 c5 discectomy and now we are ready to put a put a cage expanding cage with a graft cage is filled with the bone fragments which we had extracted during the nibbling and they are filled inside the cage now once the cage is placed it is expanded the knob on the on the surface it can be rotated and cage will get expanded now we are expanding the cage now before we completely finally fix we cover the dura matter with the sponge stamp or gel foam and so that the any small ooze is prevented and the cage is placed now you can see it is filled with the bone and it is placed in the center at this stage again you take an intraoperative fluoroscopy to see that we are not oblique or on one side it should be perfectly placed in the center <coughs> and and the cage is expanded by about 1 to 1.5 millimeters is expanded so that it fits snugly the sharp sharp uh, ridges on the surface of the cage they hold the bone snugly and tightly now we are ready to fix it with the screws one must see that the screw plate is on the center of the bone and not on the edge of the bone so once you confirm it fluoroscopically you are in the center of the bone the screws are placed now when you place the screws again we usually direct them medially not laterally always they should be directed medially so that they they, they sit inside the body and don't go outside the body laterally that the direction of the putting the screws should be medium as shown here now both the screws are placed we have a screw guard on every cage once the screw is completely tightened the guard comes out and holds the screw so that the screw doesn't eject out due to the movements of the spine during the normal course of life so that is the both the screws are placed and the guard has come out so that screws don't eject out later on now that is the upper part both the screws are placed now the lower part similar procedure is done again the screws are placed lower part and and they are directed medially on both sides so that they don't go away from the body so direction of putting the screw should be medial as is shown here and it should be center of the body not at the edge of the body either superior edge or inferior edge it should be the center of the body which is usually commend commendable now you can see the left side screw is placed and the the, the cage is very nicely fitting there and this is the right side screw is placed as i mentioned to you earlier till the screw guard i holds the comes out and holds the screw in place so that they don't eject out both the screws are placed perfectly and the central screw is placed so that the the screw doesn't the cage doesn't come down intraoperative fluoroscopy is confirmed now sides of the cage are filled with the bone pieces bone fragments which were taken out during the nibbling of the same vertebral body in the initial stages they are placed on both the sides and covered and they are covered with the sponge stone gel foam so that they don't come out so later on they create a bony fusion at that juncture now you can see the filling of the bones fragments on the both the sides 
This is the end stage of surgery. Now cage is fixed snugly and the wound is closed. Patient continues to be on traction for 48 hours to 72 hours. Now you can see the power has improved and his leg movements are perfectly normal, almost grade 5 post-operatively on day 2. The traction is still on and on third day we repeat an x-ray a CR X-ray at the bedside and see that the graft is placed well and it is, it is fixed well then on third or fourth day we take off the traction. This is an x-ray post-operatively which we did and once the traction is out on day three patients is mobilized with physiotherapy and starts walking. He is absolutely normal, power is five, it was three, now it is five, distal movements are normal. That is our neuroanesthesia team. Our presence online with more than 435 microsurgical endoscopic navigation guided educative neurosurgical operative procedures online on YouTube, our channel. Thank you very much for your